Hi, I'm Chris, and today I am sharing my experience with CraftX Warranty Service. Spoiler alert, I wouldn't have made this video if there weren't issues with This is my CX125 HC planer. It's a CraftX model. It's been in service for quite a while, and the store called me this morning to say it was ready to pick up. I rushed right over to get it. Let's see how they did. All right. I've got the planer that just came back from warranty service set up. Uh, my shop vac is connected to it. I've got this pine board that I'll be using as a test uh, piece um, to address one of the uh, explanations that uh, Busy B provided. They said that my board might be slipping because it wasn't true on the bottom and that can cause it to, to go cattywampus through the rollers. Well, I just ran this through my uh, eight inch uh, joiner, which is also a CraftX model. To address uh, and make sure that the uh, the bottom was dressed and flat. Some of you may have also noticed that in the bottom corner uh, I've got an identical CraftX uh, CX125 HC planer. That is a newer planer that I purchased because I was waiting on this one for so long um, and that is going to be my uh, my test tool to verify whether this one that came back from service is actually operating. So I've got the depth set for a initial very light pass and then I'll do a quarter half turn just to see how well it performs. This machine is rated for a cut of 1 16th of an inch which is a full turn of the handle. I have never been able to do that with this planer. Let's try it. Alright, so you can see that there's a lot of hesitation as the board was feeding through the planer. I'm going to go over to the newer uh, planer so you can see the difference between the two. And uh, I can assure you that the newer one is performing much, much better. There's no hesitation through the rollers. Let's see this together. So I know what you're thinking, pine is a very soft wood, it's not really a good test. Well, it's a good test of whether or not the, uh, the planer is going to feed soft wood through it, and we saw that it has difficulty with that. One of my main complaints was that because the wood was hesitating going through the rollers, it was staying too long under the cutters, and that was causing burning of the wood, which was really difficult to sand out. So let's try it with a piece of maple. It's a harder wood. It is likely to burn a little bit more if there's hesitation. Let's give it a try. So here's the planer. There's the way I identified mine before sending it out. 
and there is the repair tag and that number right there. Here's the piece of maple that I just fed through it. There's a burn mark caused by hesitation. There's some hesitation burn marks there and right there is another big one. Those are not shadows, those are burns in the wood. All right, I'm gonna do a few more things. I'm gonna do a three quarter turn on the piece of pine to see how the planer responds to that. And then I'm gonna show you a proper front and back view with two different cameras. So there's no doubt what's going on with this machine. And then I'm gonna get back in touch with Craftex to see what their response is. So the planer choked out so bad on a three quarter turn, which is less than 1 16th, that I hesitate to go any further. There's a lot of hesitation for the front roller to pull it in. Once it gets going, it doesn't leave burn marks on the uh, pine, uh, but I think I'll do it on the uh, maple next to see how it responds. What you just saw with the uh, maple board is a lot of hesitation with it going through initially. There's a lot of tear out at the front end here. Uh, there's a little bit of burning, uh, mostly at the front and at the back. There is a really significant amount of snipe. So not the best result from this, uh, this test cut. I'm going to give you another view of that from above with a fresh cut. So this is the manual from Craft, Craftex for the uh, thickness planer. I'm going to scroll down here to show you the specification table. So at 12 and a half inches, the full width of the uh, planer, you should be able to make a 1 16th inch cut, which is one full turn of the handle. My boards that I used in the test are five and a half inches wide. So they should be giving me the uh, performance here for a six inch board which is one eighth of an inch, which is two full turns of the handle, and the planer is choking out at three quarters of one turn. Now, if you stuck around this long, you deserve to know the backstory. And that's that in 2019, my wife and I suffered a house fire which consumed the workshop. I had a lot of tools to replace in a relatively short period of time, and I went to what I was familiar with. I've been a customer of Busy Bee since 1998, and in the years that have passed, I have come to recognize that by and large, their tools strike a pretty good balance between performance and cost. So I purchased this planer in July of 2020 during the mad rush for replacing my workshop. And it never worked as well as I expected from the start, but I was busy with everything else that was going on. And I endured that for almost two years. The staff at the Ottawa outlet of Busy Bee are friendly and knowledgeable, and I enjoy shopping there for, uh, for my needs. Unfortunately, when they send a tool out for repair, they lose any influence over it. The local store had no information to offer me, 
and I couldn't get any answers out of the customer service uh, phone number or email address. After 16 weeks, I got tired of getting the runaround, so I went onto LinkedIn and I found the president of the company, the CEO, and the head of marketing, and I messaged them all. I also filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. After hearing nothing for six days, I published online reviews for the Ottawa store and for the head office. The very next day, this morning, I get a reply from Busy Bee through the Better Business Bureau, basically telling me that they still think that this tool is operating correctly, but as an act of goodwill, they're willing to take it back with a 40% restocking fee. My position is the tool is not operating the way it should be. It is 21 months old, well within the 36 month warranty period, and Busy Bee should make good on its warranty and either repair it to satisfaction or replace it or make an offer that is better than a 40% reduction in its cost. Then again, I'm just a guy keeping busy in a basement workshop. So let me know what you think. Should the company be doing more to make good on their warranty or am I out to lunch? Please like, please share the video, and if you want to know what the resolution is, follow because I will be producing an update. Thank you for watching.